I'm Jeannie Caldwell, and welcome to In His Presence. Today I'm going to be talking about you are a part of God's perfect plan. But before we go into that teaching, I want to sing a song, a Christmas song called Silent Night. <laughs> We'll be right back. Welcome back. We're going to be talking about you are a part of God's perfect plan, and you really are. You've just got to know it, and you've got to get in there and find the Scripture and plug in and uh, let it reign and rule and guide your footsteps. But first of all, if you will go to Matthew 6... Uh, verses uh, 25 through 33. We're going to read every one of them. And it says, Therefore, I say unto you, take no thought for your life, what ye shall eat or what ye shall drink, nor yet for your body what ye shall put on. Is not the life more than meat and the body than raiment? Behold the fowls of the air, for they sow not, neither do they reap, nor gather into barns, yet your heavenly Father feedeth them. Are ye not much better than they? Now notice this is Jesus talking. This is not a, 
an apostle. This is red letters. <laughs> Jesus is talking. Verse 27. Which of you by taking thought can add one cubit unto his stature? And why take ye thought at, uh, for raiment? Consider the lilies of the field, how they grow. They toil not, neither do they spin. And yet I say unto you that even Solomon in all his glory was not arrayed like one of these. Wherefore, if God so clothed the grass of the field, which today is and tomorrow is cast into the oven, shall he not much more clothe you, O ye of little faith? Therefore take no thought, saying, What shall we eat, or what shall we drink, or wherewith shall we be clothed? For after all these things do the Gentiles seek. For your heavenly Father knoweth that ye have need of these things. But seek ye first the kingdom of God and his righteousness, and all these things shall be added unto you. Praise be to God. I remember the time that the Lord jumped off the page in my heart when I read those verses. We were on our first uh, trip out of state. In fact, it was in 1974. And uh, Happy had resigned his job in 73. And then in 74 is when we went to uh, Virginia, Arlington, Virginia. And uh, we were there for a month, I guess, and stayed with my sister Liz. And she had gotten us some meetings because nobody knew us. We had just uh, started singing, you know. In fact, Happy was studying the Word. He, uh, he didn't know the Word like he does now, but he was just studying the Word. But at any rate, we were just singing at that time. We were the Agape Singers. And at any rate, we were uh, there in Virginia, and all of a sudden, I felt such a cloud come over me and uh, it was just like the big ball of, uh, of uh, depression, and it just came over me. And this, and this voice said to me, well, you're doing fine now, but what are you going to do this summer? What are you going to do when you get back home this fall? And, um, and I thought, I don't know what we're going to do. You know, I didn't know. I didn't know these scriptures like I know them now. I'm like I'm teaching you now. So I went out and got in our little van that we, you know, went, went around. It was our prayer closet, actually, on the road. And um, I said, Lord, and I had my Bible with me, and I said, Lord, I don't know what we're going to do. You know, <laughs> I don't know where we're, what we're, what we're, how we're going to live. I don't know what I'm going to eat or, or anything or how I'm going to clothe myself or my son. And um, so... He said, well, just open up the Word and begin reading it. Well, I, I knew his voice, and so I opened up the Word and I began to read it. And it's like the different things that I read jumped off the pages into my heart. That's all I know how to say, and I'm sure there are many of you that have had that happen. And I mean to tell you, it jumped off the page into my heart. And I thought, wow, you know, he will clothe me like he did the lilies and he will feed me like he does the birds and, and uh, he will give me something to drink. And I thought, this is wonderful, God. And so I really was so blessed when he gave me the revelation of that word. Now, you have to have it. You have to have the revelation of it because if you don't... Uh, when, when trials come, and they will come, when, when you stepped out in bold faith, resigned your job, and hit the road for him, Satan's going to see to it, until you know what the Word says, he's going to see to it that you fail. He wants you to fail. He doesn't want you to succeed. And so, um, but I took hold of that Word. And uh, I remember then, right after that, we went to a meeting in uh, California, and I heard... Brother Roberts, or Roberts say, people will tell you how to fail. So once you've heard from God, confer no more with flesh and blood. And I thought, you know, that's the truth. I don't care if it's your family. I don't care if it, who it is. If it's your pastor, they will tell you how to fail. 
But you know what? You can absolutely get into the Word and find out this Word is truth. You can stand on it. You can rely on it because it will take care of you. So that's when I learned what Matthew 6, 25 through 33 was saying. And it's been in my heart ever since. I have never worried about anything because I knew, I know, I have known that God will take care of me. And he has, I'm telling you, he has. And my husband can tell you that uh, my faith, you know, he said, she's got a faith that works. And did you know I do? People call me all the time and say, would you pray for, for me about this? Will you pray for me about that? And, you know, I pray for them. And sometimes it happens all of a sudden. And then sometimes it doesn't. But let me tell you something. It will happen if it's what God wants. So just remember that. Okay. Number one. You have to refuse doubt. You cannot doubt. Now, when you don't know, you will doubt. So people say, well, I know that he's able, but I don't know if he's willing. Well, he won't until you find out his will. And you must have the knowledge of his word. And when you've got knowledge of his word, I'm telling you what, you'll believe it. Now, let's go to... um, Second Peter, Second Peter, um, Second Peter one, one through three. Simon Peter, a servant and apostle of Jesus Christ, to them that have obtained like precious faith with us through the righteousness of God and our Savior Jesus Christ. Grace and peace be multiplied unto you through the knowledge of God and of Jesus our Lord, according as his divine power hath given unto us all things that pertain unto life and godliness, through the knowledge of him that hath called us to glory and virtue. So we see right there that we have a choice. Unbelief is a choice. But if you believe God and you believe His Word, He will absolutely uh, tell you what to do, how to do it, and lead you on the path that you're to go on. Now, God is willing for you to have things, and you must realize that. And notice Peter is talking to us because he said that we have obtained like precious faith, the same faith. He said in verse 3, according as his divine power has given unto us all things that pertain unto life and godliness through the knowledge of him that hath called us to glory and virtue. So we have obtained the same faith. Hallelujah. Now grace has been uh, uh, defined as unmerited favor, but grace is more than that. It is God's willingness to use his power and ability on our behalf. He is willing to get personally involved with us. Hallelujah. I don't know about you, but he gets personally involved with me when I get personally involved with him. The more attention you give him, the more attention he'll give you. You'll find that that's just the way he is. Now, the word peace, peace, P-E-A-C-E, literally means prosperity. It means to be joined together as one. If we are joined with Jesus, I would say that that's prosperity any way you look at it, to be joined with Jesus. He wants you to prosper in all areas, and uh, His will is for you to be saved, to be healed, delivered, and prospered. Hallelujah. If you believe he will, he will. If you don't, he won't. I can remember when I did not believe that I could be healed. And you know what? I wasn't. I can remember when I didn't have the knowledge of the baptism of the Holy Spirit. So I didn't know you could speak in tongues and have that power of God working in you. So I didn't get it. 
it wasn't until I started reading it and studying it and hearing it preached that it became revelation knowledge to me. So if you believe he will, he will. If you don't, he won't. That's just the way he is, but he's, he's precious. Now let's go to John 15, uh, John 15, 7. If ye abide in me, and my words abide in you, ye shall ask what ye will, and it shall be done unto you. Now that is a beautiful promise from Jesus himself to us, to abide in him. What does abide mean? It means to live in him. You know, someone might say, well, where is your abode? Well, my abode is here or there. Well, he said, if you abide in me, and my words abide in you, Ye shall ask what you will, and it shall be done unto you. So you believe, and you don't doubt. Speak what you desire, and then meditate on it. And that word meditate, where it says uh, meditate day and night, I thought of uh, when I was teaching uh, in our college on uh, following the, uh, being led by the Spirit of God. He said you meditate on his word day and night. So I thought, and then it had meditate is uh, to muse, mutter, and speak aloud. That's the three ways that you meditate. And when you do that and keep it in your mouth, then I'm telling you what, faith will come and what you desire will eventually come. You just have to hang in there and uh, keep believing what you're meditating on. Don't ever doubt. If it's the Word of God and it's what you desire, believe me, God will see to it that you have it. He's a faithful God. If you believe what it says in Mark 11, well, let's just go there real quick like. In Mark 11, uh, 23, says, For verily I say unto you, that whosoever shall say unto you, shall say unto this mountain, be thou removed, and be thou cast into the sea, and shall not doubt in his heart, but shall believe that those things which he saith shall come to pass, he shall have whatsoever he saith. Once again, that's Jesus talking. I, I, I have to say that because to me, when it's Jesus talking, I want to pay close attention because that's the Son of God came to this earth and redeemed mankind and uh, so I tell you what, I am not going to doubt him. If it's in his word, I'm not going to doubt it. Keep it in your mouth and, uh, and it will come. Now, if you say the wrong things, trouble is on its way. You are sowing the wrong seeds. Frame your word, world with your words. Frame your world with your words. Sow the right seeds now, Jesus rebuked the disciples many times for their doubt. He wants us to believe. It honors him. Don't dishonor him. Mark 16, 14. Uh, let's go over just a few pages. Mark 16, 14. Afterward, he appeared unto the eleven as they sat at meat and upbraided them with their unbelief and hardness of heart, because they believed not them which had seen him after he was risen. Now, upbraided means to criticize severely, scold vehemently. That's a scary thing to me. For Jesus, the Son of God, that I had been with for three years, and he was fixing to go to heaven, and for me to doubt that he was uh, risen and that the people that came and told me I didn't believe them. Now that would, that would, that would really hurt me. That would hurt my heart. It really would. So it said he upbraided them with their unbelief and hardness of heart because they believe not. So count your blessings. Count your blessings and faith will come. Talk problems and doubt will increase. So, 
That's what you do. That's number one. Number two, you refuse care. Now let's go back to uh, Matthew, the sixth uh, chapter. That's what we started off with. Mac Matthew, the uh, sixth chapter, verse uh, 25, said, Therefore I say unto you, take no thought for your life, what you eat or what you drink or your body, what you shall put on is not the life more than meat and the body than raiment. Take no thought, he said. Take no thought. Now, it, it doesn't say not to plan things. I think we should plan things. But he said, don't, don't take care and don't take thoughts. Now, Jesus does mean for us to plan things, but not to take care of it. Not to take thought or care. Now, let's go to Luke. Matthew, Mark, Luke, Luke 10, verse 40. This is when uh, he went to uh, Martha's house, and uh, Martha received him into her house, and she had a sister called Mary, which also sat at Jesus' feet to hear the word. But Martha was cumbered about much serving and came to him and said, Lord, does thou not care that my sister has left me to serve alone? Bid her therefore that she help me. And Jesus answered and said, Martha, Martha, for you love the uppermost seats in the... No, I'm in the, that's the wrong page. Martha, Martha, thou art careful and troubled about many things, but one thing is needful, and Mary... Hath, found, hath chosen that good part which shall not be taken away from her. Wow. He, he doesn't want us putting things in this life uh, before him. He, does, he doesn't really want us putting anything before him. He said, uh, take no care in your home. Martha serving people, and he didn't want uh, her trying to drag Mary you know, into helping. He said, no, she's, she's where she's supposed to be. Now, Matthew, uh, Matthew 13, let's go there. Matthew 13, Matthew 13, 20, 22. He also that receives seed among thorns is he that heareth the word and the care of this world and the deceitfulness of riches choke the word and he becometh unfruitful. So we see that when you don't refuse care, like we're saying, that's number two, refuse care, it will choke the word. It'll choke the word right out of you. So don't take care. And now let's go to Luke 21, 34. And take heed to yourselves lest at any time your heart be overcharged with surfeiting and drunkenness and the cares of this life and that they come upon you unawares. So don't take care for anything. Take heed to yourself. And then 1 Peter uh, 1, uh, 1 Peter First Peter 1, uh, 5, uh, verse 7, Casting all your care upon him, for he careth for you. Don't let care take you over this Christmas season. Trust him. And then, uh, let's see what we have here last. Let's receive blessings. Receive blessings. Now, Matthew 6, he said, If you do all these things, then all these things will be added unto you. So what things is he talking about? He's talking about uh, food and clothes and clothes and all those things and a place to live. That's what he's talking about. That's blessings. Now, then there's Malachi. Now, let's go to Malachi. That's this, this side of the uh, Old Testament. Matthew, I mean, Malachi 3, verse 10 
bring ye all the tithes into the storehouse, that ye may be there may be meat in your house, and prove me now herewith, saith the Lord of hosts, if I will not open you the windows of heaven and pour you out a blessing that there shall not be room enough to receive it. Praise be to God. And then Psalms, let's go to Psalms 37, verses 3 uh, through 7. He said, Trust in the Lord and do good. So shalt thou dwell in the land, and verily thou shalt be fed. Delight thyself also in the Lord, and he shall give thee the desires of thine heart. Commit thy way unto the Lord. Trust also in him, and he shall bring it to pass. And he shall bring forth thy righteousness as the light, and thy judgment as the noonday. Rest in the Lord, and wait patiently for him. Fret not thyself because of him who prospereth in his way, because of the man who bringeth wicked devices to pass. Cease from anger and forsake wrath. Fret not thyself in any wise to do evil. And I thought, you know, trust, delight, commit, rest, and cease from anger. That's a wonderful promise in the Word of God for us. If you do those things, it says, He'll bring it to pass. He will bring it to pass. Sometimes you don't get what you're believing for all at once, uh, and God has reasons for moving slowly sometimes. Perhaps we're not ready to receive it all yet, everything He has for us. Maybe we need to be more mature, and maybe we can't handle it yet, but we need to develop patience. Maybe it's just not time. Galatians 6, 9 says, In due season we shall reap if we faint not. And I want to end this program by just saying, I hope that you all have a very, very Merry Christmas. I really do. Uh, God is so good and He's so faithful to bless each one of us with His presence. And I pray that you are blessed with the presence of the Lord this year this Christmas season. But in the meantime, always remember, in His presence is fullness of joy. Bye-bye. Thank you for joining us today for In His Presence. You can write Jeannie Caldwell at Post Office Box 26207, Little Rock, Arkansas, 72221, or email her at Caldwell at vtntv.com. To order a DVD of today's program, call 1-800-264-2525 and ask for the offer number on the screen. Join us next time as we meet in His presence.